Today on Geeks at the Movies, we're reviewing The Fox in the Fairway. Hey Shane, did you know I was actually an actor in Fox in the Fairway? Really? We the Fox of the Fairway? <laughs> <laughs> Hola Geek fans, welcome back. Today we're doing a new short on Geeks at the Movies. We are now Geeks at the Theater. Today we are discussing The Fox in the Fairway, a local film produced right here in Willamette, Connecticut. But before we get to talking about it, let me introduce ourselves. My name is Shane Gooch. I'm Geeks of the host of the Geeks of the Movies. The gentleman sitting next to me is Joey the Joey Lacasse, our cameraman and actor extraordinaire. He actually starred in The Fox in the Fairway. And the gentleman sitting at the end of the table is our illustrious lead writer, the Mr. Jacob Desert Hills. What's going on? Before we He's get this beautiful. started, why don't we tell us what the what is this about? What is this? Well, this is a play, and the play is a comedy. And it is a comedy because it is a farce. <laughs> so, which basically, essentially means that none of it makes sense. And it's just joke after joke after joke going on. So, uh, the play takes place at a golf clubhouse called Quail Valley. And Quail Valley is run by Mr. Henry Bingham. And... Quail Valley is going to participate in a golf tournament, a local golf tournament, against uh, Crouching Squirrel, run across the way by a different character named Dickie Bell. And uh, Henry Bingham hires, he gets this golfer that's like really good, like awesome, named Trample Man. He's the best player in the city. He's a gynecologist, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh no, that's not, never mind. Okay, so, um, so Bingham's all happy. He's like, I'm going to win this tournament. I'm going to decide with Dickie Bell to place a bet on the tournament for $100,000. And then Dickie's like, well, hey, if, uh, if you win the bet, I'll give you $200,000. But if I win, you give me $100,000 and your wife's antique shop. Seems a little likes, crazy to me. Yeah, he likes all the old wood, the tables, and mirrors. <laughs> <laughs> so, obviously... With two, he's gonna win two hundred thousand dollars. He's got a really good golfer. So Bingham goes, yeah, sure. Like we'll take it. Sure, no problem. Let's I'll, do I'll this. sign. I'll sign up for the bet. Let's do it. He's like, oh hey, you got Trample Man in the wrong column. He's playing for us today. And Bingham's like, what's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> this is the most epic explanation ever, Joe. So other shenanigans <laughs> occur. Um, I play a character named Justin Hicks, whose girlfriend works at that at Quail Valley, uh, Golf and Country Club. I get a job at the club so that we have two salaries. <laughs> a lot of money coming in, so I, we get to afford to. I get to propose to her. We are engaged. Shenanigans happen. I'm not going to spoil the whole plot of the play. I am turn out to be this amazing golfer, but I don't know that I'm a really good golfer. And Bingham's like, "Yeah, you're going to play for us today." And other stuff happens. It gets really crazy, and it's a it's a really funny play. Let me tell, let me, why don't you tell us, uh, Jacob, what did you think of the play? We, just to let us know, so Joey's in the play, he stars in the play, we got to sit there, we got, we got seats high in the balcony area, where is, what is that area called? That is the tech booth. The, we got seats in the tech booth, and we got to watch the, the play. Audience. I haven't been in a, into a play since I was, I don't know, like in high school or something. You have been to some plays before at the Winter Theater Guild, yeah. what did you think? I, I thought this was a, a very funny play. It definitely delivered on what, what it was selling, which what doesn't make any sense. Right. Yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, 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 <laughs> it really doesn't. Yeah. And, and I thought all the actors in this in this play were really great, except for the one sitting to my left. Is yeah, you know, yeah, Justin Hicks, he was just a real real bland character. But <laughs> I'm kidding. Fight me. <laughs> uh, in all serious though, you you were really good in the play. You, Thank you, sir. You 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 delivered on on what that character was all about. You know, he you just is really dumb. <laughs> d d dumb character right. that d d doesn't he doesn't really know what he's doing at, at, at any point in the play there's that really funny scene uh, where he's holding two cigars and he just stands there the entire time holding the cigars but it, this is a really really funny play but what, what did you think about it Shane? I was excited to go to this play because I was like cool I get to go to a play I haven't been to a play since I was in high school and I was in high school I didn't care and I was bored and I wish I wasn't there hashtag theater <laughs> so today well not today but the, the other day when we went to the play I was excited about it but I didn't know what to expect Joey you 
You kind of lowered my expectations a bit. I told you, <laughs> I told you not to keep your expectations high right. for the actual basis of the play because you would be disappointed and just focus on the comedy, go for the enjoyment of the play. Right. So when you're when you're reviewing something, when you're talking about artwork, you have to review it in context. I was watching this old episode of. Um, uh, uh, Roger Ebert and Gene Sisko, you know that, that old show they had where they re re uh, reviewed movies? And on that episode of Ebert and uh, Sisko, at the, uh, Sisko and Ebert at the movies, they reviewed two movies. So they, they reviewed more than that, but they reviewed Full Metal Jacket by Stanley Kubrick, and they removed like Benji Come Home or some one of those silly kid like uh, animal movies. Puppy movies. Roger Puppy. Ebert gave a thumbs down to Full Metal Jacket, and he gave a thumbs up to the, the dog movie. <laughs> Gene Siskel went crazy. He's like, how could you possibly do this? This is so ridiculous. You're actually comparing these two movies. And then Roger Ebert's like, whoa, whoa, hold on, hold on, check yourself. You have to review things in context. Check yourself. Full Metal Jacket was way, way more of the film of that, that Benji, that dog movie. But Full Metal Jacket was going for something different. And, and, and according to Roger Ebert, he failed at that. He failed at achieving his artistic goal. Here with Fox and the Fairway, they're not trying to be some grand Shakespearean drama. It's not Hamlet. Although there's not King Lear. There's Shakespeare in the play. Right? There is, oh, there's a number Ooh. of Shakespeare references. I love the Shakespeare references. I love like the Henry V. You got did you get Hamlet in there too? Was another reference you had? Uh, uh, Horatio. Horatio uh, yep, so you yeah, 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 the Henry V. Yeah, the, 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 the Hamlet ref reference, the Henry V. reference. Fox and the Fairway was going for this cheesy good time. This you just want to come in, you want to laugh. You, you want to cringe a little bit about the stupidity, but it's all for the goal of, of just entertaining you, and it entertained me. Uh, your guest star, your, your romantic interest, I love the screams. The screams <laughs> were epic. Um, at one point, you karate chopped somebody. Was it you that karate chopped someone? It was so devastating. And I was so I was so inspired by it. Was it was a stool. Right. I was what? so inspired by that. <laughs> I karate chopped Jacob. I almost crushed his clavicle while doing it because I was inspired by the play. That tells you how excellent this movie so was. So good to goal. <laughs> now, Joy, why don't you uh, give you some self analyst some self um, a review, some self reflection? What do you think about the play? What did you think about it when they said, "Hey, you want to be in this play?" What did you think when you, when you got the script? You went. I'm reading it. What did you think? Well, um, I actually got the script. What's the question? <laughs> <laughs> when you got the script, what did you think? Well, uh, I got the script and I read through it. I'm like, this is a really funny play, you know? I'm not going to think too deep into it, you know? Like, it's funny. It's got a lot of jokes. It's going to be good. You know, the, the script itself seemed kind of boring because you got to be with the other people on the stage to actually, like, right. get the humor and, like, add your own stuff to it to make it funny. And I'm like, eh, it's okay. And then as soon as rehearsal started, it's it got really good. Why did you want to go forward with this? Because you're telling me now you seem eh, a little iffy about the play beforehand, but you're into it after the fact. Why was that the case? I am a man for theater. I see. A man so, for theater. And when I get a part, I go through with it. <laughs> <laughs> a professional man. Jacob, what was the most surprising thing to you about this play? When you walked in this play, what did you expect and what did you get? Well, I expected it to be filled with a lot of humor, but I didn't expect the, I didn't expect all all the laughs that I got with it to actually. I didn't expect that much, a lot of laughs. but but there was a lot of laughs. It worked and, for you more than you thought. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Yeah. Yes, and and also, all I felt that the this is kind of an ensemble cast just because there's six main characters. Yes. Yeah. They all, you all had like such great chemistry together, and I, I thought that was a, a little bit of a, of a plus to to the play itself, and it, and just just how fast this this play moves, yeah, it, it, it's great pace, it, and it lasted quite a while because I actually expected to get get out of the theater earlier, but I got out later, but I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't two hours, I didn't feel it though at the time. I, Right, yeah. I was in there. I didn't feel like it was I going was dragging. So quick, line after line after line after line. Right. Comedy, comedy, comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There's, there's no breaks in this movie. It, it, it's, it's play, play. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like afterwards, I, I, I talked to you after the play, and you actually seemed tired. And the play was, itself, they're running around. There I mean, are reasons. There are reasons we are tired. Go see the show, and then you'll find, you'll see why we're, we're so, we, I was so tired after the show. Um, <laughs> Jacob, we're gonna review this. What were, what are you gonna review? What, what is your score for this? For this, the Fox and the Fairway, presented by the Wyndham Theater Guild. So, Fox and the Fairway, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Which is a, it's a positive score. Very diplomatic yeah. score yes. of you, Jake. Yes. But your score. 
Four out of five stars. I do a star system. I actually thought for what Fox and the Fairway was going for, they achieved it. There's a few points in the in the first half of the play where I felt it slowed down a little bit. Yeah. But that was just a, that was a small thing. It's kind of slow. It's warming you up. Right. It's warming to the you show. Up. It's warming it's up. It's doing all the introductions and stuff in the very first scene. It's going. It's getting it through it through all that boring stuff. So you don't have all that. In right. The and I understand it. So I'm giving I'm giving it a good score. Um, I guess you can't write your own play, but you can if you want. It's up to you. Uh. <laughs> I would give the experience in itself a 10 out of 10. A 10 out of 10. It was a very, very good experience. Do you feel like you uh, have grown as an actor, as a theater actor, from doing this play? I have, because this uh, this play actually was the first show that I've ever done that wasn't a musical. So I, I, I wasn't I didn't know singing. that, really. I wasn't singing. I've only done musicals. Okay, so, so what... It helped me grow as an actor. Contrast that to me, then. I didn't know that. What's the singer. difference between that and a musical? Like, what's the... For you as a performer, what, what does that feel? Well, I didn't get to sing. One... <laughs> And I, I really enjoyed singing on stage and stuff. But it was more into the becoming the character in the heat of the moment, not saying some lines, sing a song. You know, I, lo I love musicals, don't get me wrong. But it's I feel like there's not as much to the character in musicals than in regular movies. Right. It's, it's difficult to, to create that character when yeah. you have to sing. You know, singing is a different medium. You can't be specific. You're trying to have a vocal melody, make it sound good. So maybe you might use words yeah. that aren't quite specific just to make it sound good. But overall, we enjoyed The Fox and the Fairway. Um, we're hoping to see more stuff at the Window Theater Guild. And maybe we'll even I have go... One more comment too. Oh, oh, we have one more. I have one more comment. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I just want to say, whoa. this was a wonderful experience, but I have to say that the rehearsals were a lot like camping. And how so? Because they were very intense. <laughs> What? It, <laughs> you're, you're... Intense, like, like camping. Because you camp in a tent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I went over my head for a second, folks. Intense. Get... You said intense and not intent. In yeah, intense. <laughs> because you camp intense. I know you do. I know. <laughs> oh man, we are so awesome here at Geeks of the Movies. Anyways, my name is Shane Goodrich. This is Joe Alacas. And what we have here? Jacob does the toes. And we will talk to you guys later.